If you saw my last video where I did an unboxing and introduction to the new Commodore 64 Ultimate, you may well have seen me swap out a couple of arm seed chips from my older Ultimate 64 base machine. Well, this time around it's the turn of that Ultimate 64 base machine to see the love when I install the arm seed's bigger brother, the arm 2 seed, into its now empty seed sockets. <music> This is the ARM2 SID, a more feature rich version of the ARM SID, which itself is a modern replacement for the Commodore 64 SID sound chip. This version comes with an ARM2 SID chip and a second board that can be used where two SID sockets are available, such as on the Commodore 64 Ultimate or the original Ultimate 64 boards. It can also be installed on a vintage machine with a single socket, but this does involve some complex soldering and it's not really for the faint of heart. It also comes with this cable harness to join the two boards together. This one is specific for all variants of the Ultimate 64 board, including the one found in the new Commodore 64 Ultimate. To install, you simply put the ARM2 SID chip into the SID1 socket and the SID2 board into the SID2 socket, making sure you orientate them correctly according to the notch printed on each of them. The instructions here show the correct way to install them on an Ultimate 64 board, but if you're installing these on a Commodore 64 Ultimate, you'll find the correct orientation is illustrated on the board itself. As the version of the Ultimate 64 board I have here has ZIF sockets for the SIDs, installation is super easy. Just lift the leaders to open them up, drop each chip into the appropriate socket, and then push the levers back down again to secure them in place. Next you'll need to plug both sides of the cable harness. So the first one goes into the ARM2 SID and I found this was easy to install. But the second side was much more fiddly uh, with the tension on the cable making it difficult to line up with the socket. But with the cable harness in place, you then need to just plug in the one long wire that's left into the pin marked SID A5-9. to Here on the Ultimate 64 board, it's the pin on the left. And on the Commodore 64 Ultimate, it's the top pin that you'll need to plug it into. This connects the ARM2 SID to some additional address lines that allow for extra functionality. Once everything's back together, we'll need to do some initial configuration. Starting with enabling the two SID sockets. Then we'll need to make some changes to the SID addressing, starting with the SID1 socket, um, which we'll need to map to D400, and the SID2 socket we need to map to D420. We need to set the dual SID range split to A8, and then finally we need to unmap the ulti SIDs. Then we can run the ARM2 SID test and configuration utility. Now from here we can change the type of SID device that it's emulating. We can have 6581 or we can set it to 8580 or we can have it auto detect depending on the voltage that's being supplied to the chip. We can customize the filters. We've got some extra features here which I'm going to leave as their defaults because to be honest I'm not sure at this stage exactly what they do. And then we can set the type and level of Digifix. Now this is a type of fix that's applied to real 8580s and it's designed to improve the sound quality. And then finally we have the address mapping which for now we're going to leave as uh, the pin connection set as socket and the emulation type set to SID. Before we look at some of the additional features of the ARM2 SID, I'm just going to do a comparison of the ARM SID against the built-in ulti SIDs by comparing a few game tunes. I'm going to start off with one of my favourite games, 1942.
when it comes to comparing with Sid Music, I find it really hard to tell any difference between the two. However, there is one area where the ARM SID is much better than the current Altisid implementation, and that's when it comes to playing digitized sounds. In the following example, the difference is really clear. With the Altisid, the sample is very distorted, but with the ARM SID, it's much clearer and sounds much as intended. In addition to being able to play stereo sound with two SIDs, the R2 SID can also act as three SIDs. To do this we need to go back to the configuration utility. We need to go into address mapping and we need to set the pin connection back to wire. And then we need to check the emulation mode is set to three SID. Now the downside here is that we have fairly little control over the address mapping, so there may well be many 3SID samples and demos out there that this won't work with. However, there are some 3SID examples on the ARMSID site, and I'll leave links to these in the description below. Next up is arguably the ARM2 SID's best feature, and that's its ability to play FM sounds. Before we can do that, we need to modify some of the SID addressing. We need to change the SID socket 2 address to DF40. And the dual SID range split, we need to set that to A5. Then it's back to the configuration utility. And this time we need to change the pin connections back to socket. And the emulation mode to both. Now you could select SFX for slightly better FM sound quality, but then you'd lose the SID capability. Now before we go any further I'm just going to power cycle the machine. And then when it comes back on we can see that the SID change has been uh, recognized. And if I just go in and have a look at SID socket 2 you'll see that it's no longer showing that it has an arm SID in it. OK, so now let's find a tune that mixes FM synthesis with the SID. Um, the Commodore did in fact produce an SFX sounds expander cartridge back in the day that played FM sounds just like this, but they're hard to find now and if you do find one, uh, they're pretty expensive.
Finally, I'm going to show you how you can mix the dual SID capability of the ARM2 SID with the dual ulti SIDs to play a 4 SID tune. So we're going to the configuration utility again and set the emulation mode back to SID. So you can see now the SIDs in uh, sockets 1 and 2 are showing as ARM SID. In the SID addressing I'm going to set socket 1 to D400, socket 2 to D420, I've set the ulti SID 1 to D440 and the ulti SID 2 to D460. I'm going to set both of the arm SIDs to 8580s. And then let's just find a good four SID tune to play. If you're the owner of a shiny new Commodore 64 Ultimate, would I say this is a must-have addition? Well, no, not necessarily. But if sound is important to you, especially with demos, and you want the ability to easily configure two, three or four SIDs, or you want the ability to play FM sound, then it's definitely worth considering. It's also easy to install on boards with dual SID sockets, and if you really want to fill those SID sockets, it's almost certainly going to be cheaper than buying a pair of original SID chips, at least at the moment. Well that's it for this episode, if you've enjoyed it as always let me know by leaving a like and why not leave a comment as well. If you want to see more retro content like this then make sure you're subscribed to the channel and don't forget to click on that bell icon so that you'll get notified when there's new uploads. But that's it for now, wherever you are take care and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode of Retro Now.